where we celebrate Ascension Day. Uh, I know this is a surprise. I didn't announce this. We didn't make a big deal about it. Um, I just felt this morning that it's a great opportunity for us to have this moment online together. I know this will stay on, the, on our pages and be on there for the day. And whenever you find a moment, I hope that you can watch this and share in the message, share in the moment, and grab the, the symbols of communion and have communion with your family, with, if you're on your own, with yourself, that's fine. Um, however you can do that today. And let's remember that, uh, that Jesus went into heaven to prepare a place for us. And that's what this moment is all about. So I thought I would share a song, which is a, a new song that I wrote recently that we're actually working on bringing out soon. And um, when I thought about something to, to share with you, I felt that, that just this song was on my heart. It just um, captures so many things of who God is, why we worship Him, who we are as, as His children. And uh, I think it is a, it's a song that is apt for a day like today. So I would love to share the song with you just very raw and acoustically today. I um, hope it sounds good wherever you are. And uh, thanks for joining us online or even watching this later. So this song is called The Only God. And um, let's use it to worship Jesus today. Here we go. You're the author of my story The one who shapes my path You are the King of glory Who comforts with His staff You are a great protector there in trials and strife You are a great protector The one who leads to life The only God who lives The only God who saves The only God who gave His life So we're no longer slaves The name above all names Forever He the Spirit, Son, and in Him all of us are one. We are one. Oh. Oh. And we're the people of your pleasure. We're the password of praise. You're our greatest treasure, a joyful noise we raise. And as the battle rages, we know we've won the war. Cause you're the rock of ages, you settle every score. The only God who lives, the only God who saves, the only God who author of my 
my story The one who shapes my path You are the king of glory Who comforts with his staff Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. For those who just joined us, um, we're just taking a moment uh, as Love Key Church to celebrate Ascension Day. And I'm coming to you live here from my studio at my home. And um, we, uh, we actually had a request this morning, are we doing something for Ascension Day? Um, implying, is there a meeting somewhere? Are we gathering? And uh, we, we hope to do that next year when we have our own venue. We're trusting God uh, for a venue right now. Uh, we've put in a proposal for one. If we had it already, we could have maybe done something today. But we're trusting God for, for that for next year, um, that we can do stuff like that, have an Ascension Day meeting and worship nights and all those kinds of things. Anyway, so you can pray with us for that. Uh, that'll be possible for us. All right, so... I was thinking about Ascension Day and why we celebrated, why we, why did it used to be a holiday in our country? And um, b- because it's obviously in the church history and the church calendar, it's one of those big moments where Jesus went up to heaven. But I was thinking, why, why is it significant? And, and why, what should we focus on today, in the moment we're in, right now? And two things... I felt reminded about two things that that was important around this moment. And that is that Jesus t- told his disciples that he must go to prepare a place for them. And he also said that I need to go so the helper, the Holy Spirit, can come. And, and then he also gave them the Great Commission. And so I want to focus on a few of those passages and just remind us how important these things are to remember as children of God. And uh, so I, I wanted to read to us from, from John, the book of John, where we have this, I mean, very, very long pieces of conversation and Jesus just telling, pouring out so much into his disciples. I mean, one of my favorite chapters is chapter 15 about the true vine and where he calls them his they are now his friends no longer his servants and the friend a friend knows what the master is doing and there's just some beautiful things that happen here um, but what's important here is that he talks to them about the fact that he has to go that he has to ascend and go back to the father um, and, he, and from verse uh, 26 in chapter 15 he says but but when the helper comes whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who, produ- who proceeds from the Father. So the Spirit of truth proceeds from the Father. He will testify of me. And you also will bear witness, because you have been with me from the beginning. These things I have spoken to you, that you should not be made to stumble." They will put you out of the synagogues. Yes, the time is coming that whoever kills you will think that, he's off, that he offers God service. And these things they will do to you because they have not known the Father nor me. But these things I have told you, that when the time comes, you may remember that I told you of them. And these things I did not say to you at the beginning because I was with you. From, uh, the, now, we're now at uh, chapter 16, verse 5. But now I go away to him who sent me, and none of you ask me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he, was, and when he has come, he will convict the world of sin. And of righteousness and of judgment, of sin, because they do not believe me, believe in me, of righteousness, because I go to my Father and you see me no more, and of judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. 
for he will not speak of his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, Jesus, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I said that he will take of mine and declare it to you. How beautiful is this that Jesus is sharing with them, the promise that he is giving them. And this part is beautiful to me. I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. How weird that must have sounded to them. The, this Jesus that they came to know and love and, and traveled with and walked with and spent countless hours with. For him to say, it's better for me to go. That must have been such a weird thing to hear. But he says, if I don't go, I can't send the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit will come. And then he says all these amazing things about what Holy Spirit will do. That he will convict the world of sin, of righteousness and judgment. And that he's actually doing that through the disciples and those to follow. The other piece of scripture I'd love to share with you is um, the well-known end of Matthew the so-called Great Commission moment. And um, what I, we recently spoke about uh, these, these chapters as well and some of these moments where it was about um, doubting, speaking about doubting in, in Jesus and belief. They were talking about belief. And you'll see those little moments here. I'm going to read the end of Matthew and the end of Mark. But obviously the focus today is what did Jesus tell us to do because what he told the disciples here applies to all of us who say we are believers we are followers of christ so from matthew 28 verse 16 then the 11 disciples went away into galilee to the mountain which jesus had appointed for them when he saw when they saw him they worshiped him but some doubted there it is they worshiped him but some doubted and Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. What a powerful statement. All authority has been given to him. Because he died on the cross, he, ascend, he descended to hell, ascended back up, rose from the grave, defeated death, defeated the devil. He has all authority and the name above all names. We know that from all the scriptures we've read. Verse 19. Now he speaks, I have all authority. Now out of that authority, he is speaking to us. And he says, go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. It's amazing. He just told them in John that I have to go, but I send the helper. And now he's telling, I will always be with you. But we need to know that both things are true. Because the Holy Spirit is with us, Jesus is with us. He's Emmanuel, God with us. His physical body went into heaven, but his spiritual presence is with us through the Holy Spirit. I want to read to us last verse, um, last piece of scripture, Matthew, oh, sorry, Mark 15, no? Mark 16 from verse 14. Later he appeared to the eleven as they sat at a table and he rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had risen. Verse 15. And he said to them, go into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. It's that simple. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Those are the signs that will follow those who love him and believe in him. So then, after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word through the accompanying signs. Amen. 
I want to take communion with you. I hope you have something nearby that you can grab um, to, to just have a moment where we share these signs. And Lord, as we take the bread today and we break it, we are reminded that your body broke, that you were tortured, that you died a horrible death in our place as a ransom for us so that we didn't have to take the penalty that was due to us because of sin. And Lord, through the breaking of your body and through the blood that was spilt, we can know that we are free when we choose to believe, when we choose to follow you. So Lord, as we take these signs today, these symbols, we are reminded of who you are, what you've done, and we celebrate you, Lord Jesus. Wherever you are, just take the bread. And as you break the bread, know that his body was broken for you. And as you eat it, know that you are part of him and he is part of you. And as you take the juice or the wine, whatever you have nearby, know that his blood was spilt for you. And that it is the, the blood that the only blood that needed to be spilled once for all time. Every year they had to sacrifice animals year after year. But Jesus came and he was the ultimate sacrificial lamb once and for all. His blood was spilled and it's for you, it's for me. And we can know that we are cleansed by that blood. So let's know that as we take this today. I want us to pray for, for our church, for our people. I want us to pray for South Africa. And I want us to pray for Israel. As many of you may know, uh, Israel is under heavy attack from, from the Gaza Strip. Hamas and the Islamic jihadists are attacking them relentlessly. The mainstream media is painting it like Israel are the bad guys. That they attacked first, but this is by no means the truth. We know sources inside Israel who are telling us what's really going on. And I want you to know that what you're seeing in the mainstream media is just not true. Israel is God's country. Our nation, South Africa, has turned its back on Israel. And that is so sad. Um, and I, I hope that that will change soon. But as a, church, as a church of God, as Christians, we need to stand behind Israel, the apple of God's eye. And we need to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, the peace of Israel. All right. So let's do that. Lord Jesus, today we celebrate the fact that you ascended into heaven. And when you did that, you told us you're going to send your helper, the Holy Spirit. And you told us to go out into all the world and preach the gospel and disciple people and teach them what you have taught us. Lord, I pray that you will help us to do that every day, all day, to have that focus. Thank you that you, are, that you went to prepare a place for each and every one of us. Lord, I pray today with these people online and those watching and listening later, that you will bless each and every marriage that is represented, each and every family that's represented here, and that you will bless our church family locally and online, everyone that's involved that is that is being blessed by what you're doing through Love Key. I just pray that you will bless them, strengthen them, guide them, that you will surround them with your angels, with your wall of fire, and with the blood of Jesus, and that they will know that they know you are with them. Lord, we put on the armor of God, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, the shield of faith, the sword of the word, and the shoes of the willingness to proclaim the gospel that you told us to proclaim. We do that, Lord, and we know that we have weapons that are mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, arguments, and lofty ideas, and every thought, and to take every thought captive under the authority of Christ Jesus. Thank you that you and all your authority has given us also authority to do these things and to live this way. I pray, Lord, that you will bless South Africa, that you will, that you will heal us from our hurts, that you will forgive us of all of our sins, that you will bring godly people into, into influential places and positions, Lord, so that our, our, our focus can shift, Lord, from where we are to where you want us to be. 
Lord, I want to ask forgiveness that our country has turned its back on Israel. And I want to ask you, Lord, that you will forgive us for that. And that you will put people in power that realize the importance of aligning with Israel as your nation. And Lord, today we want to pray for Israel as a nation as well, that it's under attack. And we stand together as a church behind them. And we ask, Lord, that you will protect them as you already have, but that you will do even more so. I pray for the peace of Jerusalem. I pray for the peace of Israel. And I pray for peace between the Palestinian people and the Israeli people. Lord, that you will come and do a miraculous thing. That this little piece of land that's so controversial, what it, and we know why, because it's your country, it's your land, it's your nation. It's been fought over for centuries. Oh, Lord, I, I just pray that you will bring a miraculous peace to what is happening there right now. Thank you for the safety of people on both sides and that you will bring an end to this madness in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us online. Um, I see some comments from even our American friends. Um, Joe Olson, I see you're from, you're from Jerusalem. Thank you for joining us online. Um, we are... Your nation is in our prayers, and uh, we appreciate you joining us today. Um, Our friends from the States, our friends locally, um, thank you so much for joining us and for for being part of this. I I ask that you share this video. Uh, Once I'm done here, it's going to be available on our Facebook page and YouTube channel, and you can share that with anybody on this very special day. But thank you for joining us. Uh, If you can join us in person this Sunday for church, do so. You can register um, the the new um, registration is up. Uh, we we're gonna the message title is uh, who wants to live forever, <laughs> and uh, I'm gonna tell you why. But join us for church if you can in person. Otherwise online. We look forward to seeing you. Um, wow, we have someone from Australia. That's amazing. This is so cool. Um, I I need to say amen and thank you. And uh, we, we bless you, we love you, we appreciate you, and uh, we hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. God bless you. Bye-bye.